Hey, what's going on guys? So for today's video, I got something kind of simple. We're just going to take a look here at this universal unit figure. So I, this is the only one that I have. I haven't bought any of these myself. This one was actually sent to me. So I just wanted to check this out with you guys just as a, just a simple review of a universal unit kit, just so you guys, if you're like me and you've never had one of these before, at least you can have an idea about what the line is like, what you can expect from a just typical kind of standard universal unit kit. So there are some of like the EX series one, I think they are or just like the, the more like larger one, the more complex ones but they all should be generally around the same quality and around the same kind of details everything I, I can assume so anyway this one is of the Alex and it does include the Chobam armor and everything for that as well this is I believe from series 2 uh, of the universal unit line but just in case uh, I'm not sure exactly uh, on that but this this series does this particular series does include uh, two different versions of the RX-78-2, RX-7802 Gundam, the origin version of that. Also, the origin version of Shars Zaku-2, so there's two different versions of that. Two different versions of the Alex, one with the rifle and the shield, one with the Chobam armor, this is the one with the Chobam armor. And then uh, two different versions of the Gundam Barbatos as well. One looks to be like the fourth form, and one would be the third form, so the one with the uh, shoulders from the greys, and then the big mace, and the fourth form being the one with the massive uh, smooth bore cannon there for that so again uh, some interesting I mean there's a lot of figures in this line that have looked interesting for me that I've thought about checking out but the thing that has been kind of the thing that I didn't really particularly like about the designs is just what I've seen of the construction and just of them the details don't look super sharp and the pre-painting on them doesn't look that good and also it seems like they have a lot of hard points on them typically which I don't really care for but just taking a look at this, it does remind me, at least at first glance, a lot of the Assault Kingdom figures. So if it's going to be typically, you know, like, basically very similar to the Assault Kingdom line, then that's pretty cool, because the articulation of those, at least, was really nice. So they made for really cool little figures, while maybe not, like, the best details or the best pre-painting on them. They, were, they posed really nicely and they were pretty interesting. So just in here in the bag, we've got some of the armor parts over here. We've got the V-Fan, we've got the main body... Uh, the backpack and the waist section there. We got a couple of joint parts here, it looks like, or hands anyway there as well. Some more of the Chobam armor. And then in the other bag, we've got some more white parts there for the body, the arms, the shoulders, the legs, the feet, the arms, the feet. And then we have some stickers included as well, actually, so that's kind of interesting. You can see we've got the Alex logo on there, the UNT Spacey logo, and then some of the little color correcting stickers on this, it looks like. So, the instructions for building this are actually printed here on the inside of the box. So I figure it's not going to be all that complicated to put together, you probably don't really need that uh, in this case. But I'm going to go ahead and just get this all put together then, and we'll see how it looks. All right, and here is how it's gonna look, just uh, snapped up together and with the stickers on there. So you got little red stickers for the knees, you got a little black sticker for the front of the crotch, a couple little red stickers for the cockpit hatches, and the uh, stickers on the front of the shoulders there, the logos for those. So you also have the yellow stickers on the vents on the sides of the legs as well. And the stickers, I will mention about the stickers, they don't seem the same quality as like the foil stickers you get with like your Gunpla, normal Gunpla kits. These definitely seem of lower quality. They didn't stick quite as well. A couple times like I stuck the sticker on there at first and then like my tweezer touched it and it pew, just flew away. I had to find it uh, again. So they're not like the kind of stickers you normally get with the normal kit that like if you stick it down, it's stuck on there really well. So just make sure you press the stickers down really well if you're gonna use them for these particular kits, it seems like. But otherwise, I mean, it doesn't look too bad. It definitely could use some panel lining, some detail painting on there just to help bring out the details because it's just kind of the white areas, the detail is a little bit kind of lost in there, especially around the face. So even if you're not going to like repaint the figure or anything like that, I would say definitely give this some panel line wash to just make it look a little bit better. But obviously we're taking a look at it here and now at first without all the Chubham armor attached onto it. We'll put all that on in a second. And so without the shield, without the rifle, um, you know, it just in a basic form like this, it's going to be looking a little bit plain without that stuff. You do have the Gatling guns for in the arms, though. We'll take a look at those here in a second as well. But let's just take a closer look here to check out some of the articulation. So the head is on a ball joint, very stiff ball joint, but that will give you some nice up and down movement there at the neck. A little bit of that anyway. 
The shoulder armor is just kind of plugged onto this straight peg which just comes out of the body there so that peg doesn't move at all. That just pops down onto there. You are able to bring the arm up a little bit over 90 degrees so not too bad and then forward and back. Obviously not going to be a problem except I think I just lost that shoulder armor. We'll get back to that in a moment. Uh, this and then we have some rotation there at the top of the arm and then the bend at the elbow. That looks like it's going to give you more than 90 degrees so not a bad bend there at the elbow. The wrist is just on a peg so you can just rotate that around there. Again kind of very stiff a little bit hard to do. But here on the back of the arm is where you can remove this blue part and then we've got these little uh, machine gun bits here in the back of the arm. So just pop that in and put the blue piece back in on top of that. And so it's going to look all right, but as you can see, you're going to want to drill out the holes there for the barrels because there's no actual like barrel holes there at the end of that. But the detail on it does look kind of all right. You also notice too that the inside of that blue part is not blue because that's actually just a white plastic piece with some blue paint sprayed over the top of it and there's no blue paint sprayed on the underside of that so you might want to just go ahead and like paint in the underside of this part in gray or something like that to maybe match this dark gray part of the machine gun bit there. So as for the skirt sections, these front skirts will move up and down a little bit. They seem to be joined together here. As you can see, I guess we just remove this part off the front. So yeah, the front skirts are joined together. You're not going to want to cut those apart because it looks like they will fall apart if they're not attached to each other. So you'd have to modify that if you wanted these to move individually. But those will move up and down on their own. It looks like though moving them forward will kind of pop off the front of this part. So without doing that, they're only going to be able to move forward to maybe about there. The back skirt, the side skirts are connected onto the back skirt, so you can see they're actually molded together here. The side skirt and the back skirt are all connected together there as one bit. The legs will come out to the side, I guess not that far before popping off the whole back skirt, side skirt bit. So you can get them still though pretty far out to the side. And then we got some rotation there at the top. Again, without pulling anything apart, you're going to be able to get the legs up to about there. It seems like the extent of that before things are going to start to come apart there in the waist section. Then the knee bend though is pretty good. We have a pretty nice knee bend there, much more than 90 degrees for that. And then this interesting joint here at the ankle, it actually will extend down and actually will pull down a little bit. There we go. It's a little bit hard to get that unlocked, but then that will give you a farther range of movement for the ankle, really far to be pointed down and up like that. But then otherwise you're just going to want to pop that back up into place into like a little bit tighter angle there. You can still point the foot down very far for that. So anyway, looks good. The one sticker we don't have a use for for this kit is the Alex sticker there, which would go on the side of the shield or the front of the shield, I should say, but we don't have the shield included with this version of the kit. So just uh, to find a use for this, I'm just going to go ahead and stick this onto the side of the leg armor here. Uh, not maybe the best look, but at least we can put that sticker to use for the time being. So this leg armor should be pretty simple in how this plugs onto the leg here. And that just pops onto there, but as you can see, leaves the back of the leg just exposed like that. You have the back skirt armor, which would just pop onto here. Everything seems like it's just kind of just, uh, you just kind of put it in place and it just kind of holds onto there. So there's nothing really too complicated about that. This whole front section will all just plug onto here. We got the shoulder section as well, which is just one piece. So overall, the one thing that I will say that I do like about this so far, one thing that the line definitely has going for it is that it doesn't really have any seam lines, even like this part here on the leg where it's two halves sandwiched together. The seam line is, is kind of hidden here on like the side of the leg there, the inside of the leg. And then the same thing for the forearms. It's two pieces put together, but you have a seam line kind of here, like on the back side of the arm. It's not really a very particularly apparent one, so it's not really that big of a deal, I think. Yeah, it's the armor for going here over the backpack there as well. And I guess having that part on the backpack will help the part on the front stay together because those will plug together there above the shoulder. And speaking of shoulder, I need to find that piece that flew off into the space. Forearm armor parts here plugging on the same way as with the leg parts is that they're going to cover three of the four sides of the arm. You'll have the underside of the arm still left uncovered like that. And just one more thing I want to point out to you guys here as well is that there's no wear on either the underside of the waist or the underside of the feet to plug this onto an action base. So if you wanted to plug this onto an action base, you'd have to drill a hole into that, which seems like there's barely enough room for that. But maybe you could just plug a simple hole or a rod into the bottom of this if you wanted to have an actual flying pose. And for a quick size comparison, here it is compared with your average HG144 scale Gundam. So you can see it's going to be about half the height of a typical HG kit. 
All right, so with all the armor on there, it is looking pretty cool, I gotta say. I mean, certainly when you look at it from certain angles, the empty space on the back of the arms and the legs is uh, kind of takes away from the look a little bit. But still, for a small little candy toy figure, I gotta say, not too bad at all. The articulation's all right, the detail's all right. It's not really too much there in the way of seam lines. You know, there's a little bit on the back of the leg there as well, which I forgot to mention before, but I think for something relatively small and cheap, if you wanted to go in and to take a little bit of time, you know, do a little bit of extra work on this to make it look a little bit better, it's not a bad looking thing. And I said, is it better than the high grade? Well, in this particular case, yeah, that may, you know, be something worth considering because the high grade Alex is not really that great of a high grade. In other cases like the Origin Zaku or the Origins RX-7802 Gundam, which we have coming out as a new high grade very soon, then I think you're probably better off spending a little bit more money just getting the actual high grade kit and working on that. But if you want something small, simple, and you know, relatively cheap, then I think maybe these are not too bad of an option. So not bad figure and not a bad experience of the Universal Unit line here as a whole for my first go at it. No, I don't think it's gonna be something that I'm going to invest too much in. I don't really see myself getting too many Universal Unit figures, but uh, I'm in, I'm open to the possibility of maybe getting one or two more down the line if there's uh, ones that come out that I'm particularly interested in. So that's my review here for Universal Units, Alex, and let me know what you guys think about the line down below in the comment section if you have any further questions of course you can let me know there as well i'll try to help you out with that but thank you guys all so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time have a good one bye guys